Are you looking for help on your three fluid service on your M8 bagger? We got step-by-step -step coming up right here. What's up guys, Tony and Jason here from Tucker Speed. We're gonna walk you through step-by-step -step process today on uh, three fluid or three hole change as some call it. This is my 2018 Road Glide. Uh, this process is good for I think 2017 to current touring models. There'll be, uh, there's some differences if you're on a soft tail or older bagger and we'll talk about some of that. We should have more videos coming out later for some of those models so you might be able to find a model specific video, but uh, we got everything kind of laid out that you're gonna need to do this service. We have all the tools. We're gonna go over that before we get started here. So yeah, let's jump in on, what, on the materials, oils, and everything that you're gonna need to get started here. I mean, what are we running today? I mean, give me a rundown of what we're, we're working with today. One of the products that, that we use, one of Tony's favorites, he also uses it in his race bike, is the Motul. We got the 2050 weight synthetic. The M8, you'll need five quarts. You won't use a total of five, but and we'll cover all that in more detail down the road. Right. And then we'll need one quart of the, the primary and then a, a one quart of the 70, 90 gear oil for the transmission. Uh, to Tony's run on his bike. He's got the high flow oil filter. So we have one of those. Or the flow. flow. Flow and high flow, similarly named. The flow is a re, like a reusable, cleanable filter in an aluminum housing. Um, we'll show you what it looks like on the bike. You take the filter apart and you clean it, put it back together. If you don't have that, you're just using either like the, you know, the standard disposable filter. The high flow is what we use here in the shop. When we do the change here, we'll actually be going through the process of pulling this filter and cleaning the filter out and putting it back together. So we also have something like the Maxima oil change kits. They have like a quick change kit and a full kit. The quick change kit is just for engine oil. The full kits are like what we're doing today, a, th a three fluid change. You'll have primary and transmission fluids. You'll come with an oil filter. Uh, drain plug o-rings and everything you need to do the job so it makes it nice just to buy one part number and get everything you need uh, but like you said my preference I, I like this motul stuff i've been running it in my race bike for a few years i'm going to be running it in my street bike uh, i've really liked this stuff it's also available on the website so some of the other stuff you're going to need we got a couple of drain pans to catch the used oil some shop rags all our funnels when we go back together so yeah let's jump in on uh, what you're going to need as far as tools go all right, so we're just gonna do a quick rundown of the, uh, the tools you're gonna need to do this service. My setup is a little bit different than like if your bike is, is bone stock. So this tool list might be a little bit different. I tried to grab the stuff that will be there if your bike's stock, just to give you a heads up. I like to have some extensions. I got a, a long and a short, a couple of three eighths ratchets, like a regular length, a stubby. We got this pick out because uh, we'll clean all the old Teflon off of the drain plugs when we pull them. This is a T27. I'm not going to be using this, but your stock derby cover will have T27 screw heads. So you'll need that. Mine are, have been replaced. We have a Chacho kit on this bike. So it's a 3 16 Allen. I have a quarter inch Allen. We'll show you when we get the drain plugs off. The drain plugs actually have a quarter inch Allen in the center. And then they're also a 5 8 hex. I pulled out my, I have three different. They got a long, I have a long, a medium, and a short length. Uh, most of the bikes, I always use my long. But this M8 uh, touring model, like the, the engine oil drain plug, it's a little long. So I'll use the, the stubby or the mid length. Uh, so it's nice to have some different lengths. My, my short extension. And because I'm running the flow reusable filter, I'm not gonna be using just a standard oil filter wrench, but if you're using like the high flow or Harley branded filter, you'll wanna have an oil filter wrench. My flow filter has a 17 millimeter hex on the end of it, so that's what we'll be using it for. Some of the important stuff here, Jay. Yeah, first thing, if you guys are working on your bike, one of the priorities is investing into a, a manual. Uh, it's gonna give you all the service procedures, torque specs, locations of uh, your drain plugs, uh, your, your oil quantities. So definitely a good thing to go pick one of these up. Yeah, the service manual is huge. All that information is available like in your owner's manual, but the service manual kind of spells this stuff out. You know, never mind step our step. clock back there. <laughs> but step, uh, by step. step by step kind of a, the, what we're doing today but it's there in print and you can refer back to it you know if you're guys like us seeing it in a video probably really helps versus reading it in the manual but some sometimes you can watch this video and then what it's saying in the service manual makes more sense to you once you've actually seen what's going on and a couple of important tools uh, jay's a stickler on this stuff in our shop he doesn't let anybody slide torque wrenches Torque everything to spec, gives you your best chance of success of getting everything right, not stripping anything out, not over torquing it. Uh, if you wanna do it the right way, 
get a couple of high quality torque wrenches, uh, it'll save you in the long run. So we're gonna get the bike up in the air, get the drain plugs dropped and uh, oil draining. We're gonna jump into that now. All right, so real quick, I just wanted to talk about uh, one other thing before we get started. We got the bike in the air and obviously we are in a shop and we have the availability of a, a motorcycle lift. If you don't have a lift in your garage and you know, you're know you trying to figure out a good way to change your oil, uh, you can do it on the, on the side stand, but it's a little trickier because not everything drains completely. Another good option uh, is like one of these Condors. Um, we use these for services or transport a lot. Um, the nice thing about this is you can roll the front wheel into this and it holds the bike up and then it leaves everything underneath the bike accessible. like accessible so that you can get to the drain plugs and put drain pans underneath where like some of your you know motorcycle jacks are picking the bike up in the middle of the of the motor and right. then you can't get a drain pan there and you can't get to the drain plug. So, I mean, it's just a nice tool to have, uh, you know, for services and storage and transportation. Uh, it's just nice to have in the garage. Another thing to think about. Before we get started, please hit that subscribe button and that notification button. Subscribe and I'm gonna kick Jordan's neck off. Jordan, hey Fred, you subscribed? Yes. Is that good enough for you, Jordan? All right, guys, we got our uh, motorcycle on the lift. I've done a hot oil, so I've, I've ran the motorcycle up to operating temperature, uh, put it on the, on the rack. Now we're ready to drop fluids. So on the M8, we've got three drain plugs that we're gonna be looking for. And on the M8, they're all on the left side of the motorcycle. We've got our primary, which is right here uh, underneath. Then we got the transmission on the M8 is, is right here on the left side. And then the engine oil will be up to the front. Uh, on little nuance with the twin cams, the transmission would be over here. So if you guys are, are running that, that plug will be over on the right hand side. Of course, these fluids are gonna be hot. Drain plugs are gonna be hot. You want it to be warm when you're draining these fluids. And also you can see right there that that fluid is kind of draining a little bit slow. Uh, one thing that'll happen um, if you want it to drain a little faster, what you should do is once you get the drain plug out, go over and pop the, uh, the fill plug. Uh, Jason will do that now and you'll see that oil will start coming out once it can vent from the top side a little, little, little more. Make sure your pan's adjusted accordingly. It's gonna catch it because it starts coming out of there pretty quick. And you've, you've noticed that fluid actually looks really clean. We're actually just changing this fairly recently after a motor build. This is kind of break-in fluid, so it's only got a couple hundred miles on it. We're doing another change just to kind of get all the break-in stuff out. You know, I'll hit transmission next. That way it's just kind of not fighting the primary fluid. Yeah, you kind of work from the furthest one away and then get closer to you. That way you're not reaching in across the oil. Of course, always good to have some shop rags, towels. One thing with these, with the drain plugs, uh, you guys are gonna see like a nipple on, on the top. Those are of course magnetic. You're gonna see light fuzz probably on your engine, especially clutch is gonna have the sediment. Tony of course put a new, new clutch in there. So he's gonna have some break in on there. If it's, if it's kind of real fine, it's all good. That, that's, that's part of it. You're gonna have a little bit of break in, a little bit of wear. Transmission is clean, which is good. If you see any chunks on any of these, You've, you've got an issue and you probably need to pop open covers and, and inspect those components and look for any damage. And then now we just let all these drain up. All right, so one of the things we do uh, while we just sit and wait for the oil to drain is we wanna clean the drain plugs off really good. We'll clean all that fine material that, that Jay was talking about off, uh, try and get all the old Teflon. Uh, we'll get, the, get our pick and get the old O-ring off of there. And we'll usually just try and you know, scrape out any, any Teflon, get the threads good and clean. You can even uh, spray these off with a little bit of brake cleaner. Nice and clean and dry. Try not to drop it. <laughs> Mr. Butterfingers over here. All right, so we got the drain plugs out. Oil is draining. I've cleaned my drain plugs. They're clean and ready. I'm gonna remove the derby cover. And uh, like I said, I'm using a 3 16 Allen here uh, cause I got this Chacho kit. Um, stock derby covers or the stock derby cover screws have the T27 torque on them. I like to have a rag kind of laid out to put my screws on that way they don't roll away and get, get misplaced. Just kind of a tech tip. All right, 
set the derby cover aside. Um, so I'm running the flat kind of foam metal style gasket on mine. If you're running the factory cover, you might have like the orange O-ring in there that's reusable. You can replace it. Those orange ones, I think usually you can get four or five uses out of them before you replace them. Um, I mean, they're relatively cheap. You can pick them up at your local indie shop or the dealership or whoever you shop with, or you can order them from us. We have them available. I just, I don't know, probably just personal preference. I like the foam metal style. So these are one-time use only. So once you pull this, just go ahead and throw it away. Whoops. Not doing it. Not touchy. Looks like an inch. Smells like a foot. All right, guys, over on the right hand side of the bike, we've got our oil dipstick. Be right here. Go ahead and pull that out. Baggers are solid. They've got two uh, measuring points on the upright and on the jiffy. And then we'll take our 3 8 We use a ball allen just with the angle. You can kind of rotate it a little bit if you're in a, in a tight spot. Tony's got one of the alloy art stabilizers there, so it kind of makes it easier. Got those two, we'll be ready to fill those once we put our drain plugs back in. But first, I want to thank our sponsors, the Law Tigers. I'm joined by Scott from Law Tigers of Utah. The Law Tigers are motorcycle accident attorneys. Scott and his crew across the nation ride and understand our culture. If you've been in a motorcycle accident, the Law Tigers should be your first call. Give us a call, we'd love to help you out. All right, next step is uh, pulling the oil filter off. I have this little uh, oil catch. You can pick these up at you know your local dealership. You can find them aftermarket, but they are available from Harley. Catches a lot of the oil so it doesn't spill all over the front of your motor and stuff. You still get a little bit on the front, but it helps control it. All right, pop this filter off. Try and catch as much oil. You get a little bit of oil, it'll drain out of there. I usually try and bring the filter out on my filter wrench. I didn't get it. I'll set that down in the pan, let it drain. You see it got a little bit of oil in that catch that, you know, just catching it, but it's still drained down the front of the motor. It's okay. I mean, it's gonna happen, it's part of it. You'll have to go back and clean it up later, so. I'll walk you through the process of cleaning this flow oil filter. Um, if you have the disposable kind, you're just gonna pull the new one out of the box and put it in rather than clean this one, so. All right, so uh, just real quick, I'm gonna just wipe it off really good, get some of the oil off of the outside. Uh, that, the filter though, uh, it's kind of cool because it has a kind of a magnetic pickup on the inside as well. But you actually push this down, it's spring-loaded, and then twist it, and then it'll pop and come out. Um, it's got a spring in the bottom. When you're pushing against that filter, there's the spring comes out of the bottom there. I'll just kind of wipe this down a little bit, wipe out magnet. That magnet had just refined material on it, which is normal, especially for early break-in stages. I'll go ahead and spray this guy out. And you want to spray this filter from the inside out just to get rid of any debris that's on the outside of it. All right, once you feel like that's good and clean, kind of wipe it off, make sure it's good and dry. The flow filters, uh, you can buy new O-rings for the face of it. If it's in good condition, you might get a couple of uses out of them. Kind of wipe down the inside, everything looks clean in there. Don't forget the spring, that's for sure. Drop the spring down in there, filter, push it down and turn it to the right, and it's ready for reinstall. All right, so if you're using the disposable filters, um, at this point, get it out of the box, uh, get it unwrapped, make sure it's good and clean. What you'll wanna do is take a little bit of your 2050. Don't fill it all the way up. I don't like to fill it, just you know, three quarters full with oil, and then it'll be ready for reinstallation if you're using the disposable type. After you pour uh, a little bit of oil in there, just get some of that oil. You'll wanna wipe it on the face of the seal, and that way it just helps it not stick and helps it seat a little bit better and not damage that O-ring on reinstall. So, all right, so I got a little bit of oil inside the filter. Just grab a little bit of this oil, just kind of rub it on the seal here. I've already kind of wiped the front of the motor down where we've had some drain down on there, but just make sure you clean that up real good. Because this has oil in it, as soon as you tip it in there, it's gonna to wanna to start to drain out. That's why I don't like to fill them completely full because then it immediately starts to pour out and making a mess again. Let me just get in here. I'll just try and go quick, get it in there and start getting it threaded on. And then these oil filters, you really just wanna go like seated and then like another quarter turn. If you put a wrench on it, 
real light, not much. You don't want to go too tight on that or you'll blow that O-ring out of there. All right, so next step is get our drain plugs prepped, getting new O-rings put on each one of them. Uh, I would recommend replacing this O-ring every time you pull them. They just get chewed up a little bit when you put them in there. So they're cheap, easy to change, just, just change them every time. Uh, so I got O-rings on the drain plugs. We use this liquid Teflon. Uh, you might be able to find it at an auto parts store. Even a little bit of Teflon tape, uh, if you don't have the liquid stuff, will do. Uh, we just put a little dab on them, get all three of these prepped and ready to go back in. All right, so putting our drain plugs back in, uh, so the drain plug that's facing downward is the transmission drain plug. Uh, I'm going to kind of just wipe the face of it and then get the drain plug started back up in there. Just go ahead and thread those all the way in until I can't thread it anymore. You should, should be able to thread it all the way to the O-ring if you clean the drain plug threads really good. And then the one up under here facing forward is your engine oil drain plug seated to the O-ring. On this other side, on the outboard side of the frame rail here, it, where your primary drain plug is, go ahead and install this one here. Torque on the uh, drain plugs are 14 to 21 foot. I just always keep it at the 14 range. So I'll go ahead and I'll torque this primary drain plug. And then I'll torque the transmission drain plug. Once I've torqued those two, I can't really get this torque wrench in there to get the engine oil, but I kind of have now a feel of what that 14 foot pounds is. Just go ahead and kind of give that, you know. And you can feel the O-ring seat, right? Kind of feel and it. Wipe everything up. Don't leave any evidence of anything being drained. Keep the customers happy and we're ready to start filling. All right, we're gonna fill the primary case. Um, I use this little primary funnel. You can pick these up at the local dealership. They just make it easier to kind of, so I got my Motul primary chain case fluid here. This bike's just a full 32 ounces. So I'm just gonna pour the whole core in there. Makes it easy. I don't have to try and measure out anything. If you're curious, then make sure it's full. It's kind of hard to check the level on these primary cases, but the oil levels with the bike upright should be right to the bottom of your clutch basket. The oil level in the primary case, I think isn't you know as critical. Like obviously you don't want to be way off, but if you're off an ounce or two, not as critical in the primary case as it is like on the engine oil and transmission. So uh, I'll get this face cleaned off and dried off really good. Grab my derby cover and do the same thing to the face of it. Uh, so I'll get this started. I'll usually get the gasket on my cover, get one screw in it, it'll kind of just hold the gasket it in place as I put it up here. Grab my 3 16 Allen, just get this one started. Get all five of these uh, just kind of finger tight and then I'll torque them to spec. These are 84 to 108 inch pounds. All right, grab my torque wrench here. jo has got it set up already for the correct torque. So you'll want to torque these in a crisscross pattern. So I'll start at the top here. There we go. Like I said, just working a crisscross pattern here. All right, got all five torqued. The primary case is done and we're gonna fill the transmission. I'll, I'll start with that, just one quart. All right, we've got 32 in there. So I'll, I'll just verify that the quantity's right on the dipstick, even though with, with the six speeds, you're, you're guaranteed every time, but I, I just always do a visual check. Just make sure that the, uh, the dipstick's fully threaded in when you, when you do your check. And the vehicle on the transmission, you wanna have it upright. On the side stand, it'll give a it'll give a false reading. These just go down when, when you, there's not really a torque on these, just, just snug it. No gorilla, don't wanna snap anything. All right, we're done with the filling the transmission. We got that plug uh, tightened down. Now we're gonna move over to the engine oil. We use, of course, different funnels. We've got the smaller one for the transmission. Normally I'll keep the gear oil uh, funnel for the transmission. We're not mixing funnels. And then you always wanna make sure that these funnels are clean prior to putting cleaning oil in. So I'll just kinda, I'm gonna just make sure that this is cleaned up before. So now we'll start pouring our, our engine oil. And we use, a, of course, the engine oil, bigger funnel. We could throw more down in there a little bit faster. Uh, what I'm gonna do uh, on the M8, that, that five quarts is if, if the engine is straight dry, if you've done an overhaul on it. Uh, normally there's there's probably about a, a half half a quarter oil that's, that's still within within the engines. I'll normally start uh, maybe at, at, at four quarts. I'll just throw the dipstick in, check, see where it's at. Uh, after that, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire the engine. I'm gonna let the oil circulate while it's here on the stand or on the chalk, and I'll let it run for about a minute or so, shut it down. Then I'll, then I'll do a visual check to see where it's at, and then I'll kind of add I'll add it probably halfway 
halfway and then go do a hot oil check. I'll go ride the bike and get the full operating temperature and then come back, get an accurate top off. So yeah, we're right there. It's got full hot halfway up with the vehicle upright. So what I'll do is I'll leave it right there and I'll fire it up. All right, we're gonna drop the bike down. We're gonna fire it up and cycle it uh, for a minute or two and then recheck it and then get ready to head out and do a hot oil check, get it up to operating temp and do our final check. So now we'll just check the oil on the dipstick. Just wanna pull it out. Oil will be kicked up on this thing, so you just do one wipe, get that clean, roll it back in. You're gonna thread it all the way down. So yeah, this one. So how much it, more are you adding? I'm just gonna put it, it, it was toward the, uh, toward the bottom of the, of the fill. So I'm just gonna bring it up to about halfway and then I'll go spin it and then, then check it out. It'll probably be right where I want it at the halfway mark here. And we're talking ends. halfway between the add and fill line, Correct. right? Just to be Correct. clear. Correct. We found that the bikes don't like to be ran at the full mark. Kind of being ran at the halfway point between add and full is kind of the happy spot on these M8s. So for the pre-hot oil check, I would bring it up just to, you know, about a quarter of the way or just a little, maybe a little bit more uh, between the add and fill mark. So, and then I'd go ride it, get it hot, come back in and double check it, see where it's at, at hot. At hot is where you want it to be in the middle of full and add. It's, and I'll tell you from experience, it's easier to do it this way than to just pour a bunch in there and you have to try and take some out. It's easier to kind of shoot low and then just add a little bit until you get to where you want to be. So uh, I think we're ready to pull it off the lift. We'll go run it around the block, get it hot, and then do our final check. All right, so we just got back off our uh, hot oil check. I'm just gonna do our final check on the engine oil level. So we got it on the side stand here or the jiffy stand. If I'm trying to be technical, uh, I'll go ahead and wipe the dipstick clean, thread it fully back in right where we want it. We're good to go. And that's it. That's step-by-step step on a three fluid service on your Milwaukee eight bagger. Um, hope this video was helpful. Um, please just remember to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button. If you have any questions on the video, just hit them in the comments below. Check out our website, tuckerspeed.com. Hit us with any questions you got. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon.